who is a person? That's quite an interest, has quite an interesting history, that question. So in uh, Western uh, thought, um, legal doctrine, and so on, uh, the, a good bit of it traces back in the modern, you know, relatively modern period, uh, 800 years to uh, Magna Carta, uh, particularly Article 39 of Magna Carta, uh, which uh, uh, establishes what we call presumption of innocence. Uh, a person cannot be uh, subjected to uh, any penalty by state authority uh, with, unless uh, shown to be guilty in a fair trial by peers. That's the essence of uh, the, the principle of liberty formulated in Magna Carta. Of course, person had a very narrow range. A person, first of all, didn't, didn't include women, didn't include slaves, didn't include people without property. A person meant uh, a, relative, a propertied male, of course, white male. Uh, that's person. Uh, you move on say, to the American Constitution, next major step. Uh, it also, if you look at the Bill of Rights, it talks about the rights of persons. Uh, who are persons? Well, not Native Americans, obviously. Uh, they have to be exterminated and expelled, uh, not slaves. Actually, it's worse than that. Slave owners were super persons uh, because of the famous three-fifths rule. Uh, which gave slave owners extra rights because of the slaves that they possessed. So, but obviously slaves are not person. Uh, what were women? Uh, women were property. Uh, the U.S. took over British common law. Uh, and according to British c common law, uh, women were property. A woman was the property of her father. and The property was then handed over to her husband. So if you look at the debates in the Constitutional Convention as to why women shouldn't be allowed to vote, uh, one of the arguments was uh, it would be unfair to unmarried ma men because it would mean that a married man has two votes, uh, his own vote and the vote of his property. Uh, and that's plainly unfair. So women can't have the right to vote. And of course, uh, among white males, again, there were property restrictions of all kinds, poll taxes, this, that, and the other thing. So again, person meant pretty much uh, a little bit extended somewhat beyond Magna Carta, uh, but it still meant property white male to a substantial extent. Well, all kind of battles and struggles took place over the years. It won't run through them. You know them. Finally, by the 1920s, uh, women did get the right to vote. And in 1975, which is not that long ago, the women were the Supreme Court, which of course determines what the rules are. Uh, the Supreme Court did decide that women can be peers. Uh, they can serve on federal juries. Uh, they have a right to serve on federal juries, which makes them technically uh, persons. Uh, if you look at the 14th, the Civil War, one of the outcomes of the Civil War was the 14th Amendment. And a, which was supposed to guarantee the rights of freed slaves. A crucial notion is who is a person. It does say in the 14th Amendment that no person uh, will have their rights infringed except under, except under you know, legal conditions and so on. So who's a person? Well, who, who's a person depends on uh, what the courts decided, not what's written on parchment. You know. What the courts decided is that corporations are persons. Uh, virtually every case brought under the 14th Amendment had to do with the rights of corporations, uh, which over those last years of the 19th century and the early 20th century were gradually given more and more rights, ultimately rights of persons. That goes right to the present. Uh, the famous Citizens United vote 10 years ago essentially carries the notion of corporate personhood steps forward. Uh, corporations were the persons who had rights. Uh, there was almost nothing about freed slaves. In fact, what happened after the Civil War was that the slave population was uh, forced back into slavery. Uh, the way it was done was by 
uh, granting the southern states, which had most of the black population, uh, granting them uh, the right to establish their own laws for state in, internal state affairs. And one of the things they did is criminalize black life, literally. So if a black man is standing on a street corner, uh, he can be charged with vagrancy and given a fine which he can't pay, uh, sent to prison, stays there for the rest of his life, becomes part of a workforce. If a black man uh, looks at a white woman in a way that somebody doesn't like, he can be accused of attempted rape and he'll be in jail forever. And pretty soon most of the black male population was back in jail. That made them a perfect workforce, even better than slavery. Uh, a slave owner has property and has to take care of it. You have to reproduce the property. So it's costly, you have to give them food and so on. If the, if the slaves are in the state system, the taxpayer uh, provides, maintains the property and you can just use it. And in fact, the slave, just as the cotton production was the basis for the modern economy from which we all benefit enormously, uh, the slave system that was established after the Second World War was a large part of the basis for the Second Industrial Revolution. I mean, we're familiar with uh, chain gangs. You know, you've got these pictures of slaves working in the agricultural areas, but that's because it was visible. Uh, the same was true of mining, of the steel industry, of a good bit of the late 19th century, early 20th century industrial development was based on another slave force. Uh, this went on up until the Second World War when there was a need for what's called free labor to work in the military plants. Uh, that's a large part of the black population was freed for a couple of decades. Uh, after that, they were restored to, to uh, sent back to prison. The method was the drug war. Uh, if you look at the incarceration rate in the United States, uh, by about crime in the United States, about the same as, as other wealthy countries, little on the high side, not much, aside from uh, uh, death with guns. But that has to do with a crazy gun culture. But apart from that, uh, crime is roughly the same. Incarceration was also about the same up to about 1980. Then it starts rising. Uh, by now, incarceration in the United States is literally the highest in the world uh, for any country that has statistics. Uh, the uh, maybe five to 10 times as high as uh, your comparable European countries. Most of it is victimless crimes. Uh, drug-related crimes, which target specifically blacks, primarily males, women too by now, and increasingly Hispanics as well. Uh, so it's a kind of a restored uh, Jim Crow system, post-Second World War system. That's history up to the present. Uh, take a look at the remnants of uh, the uh, Native American population almost anywhere. Uh, miserable conditions, worst conditions in the country. Uh, in uh, uh, Central America, it's the same story. There are still, to this day, people fleeing from the uh, genocidal uh, assaults of the 1980s and being driven back from the border, sent back from Mexico and so on. Well, the, uh, so what's uh, another interesting question about who's a person is what about aliens? Uh, what if somebody comes to the United States and doesn't have documents. Well, according to Supreme Court ruling, they're not persons. They're literally, so person is narrowly defined. It's expanded beyond Magna Carta. Does include women. Doesn't restrict to property rights, at least by law in practice. It does because of many other kinds of discrimination, uh, but still excludes aliens. Uh, the, uh, these are, uh, uh, these are very fundamental questions about personhood. 